Hi. Good day again to everybody. Welcome to our third lecture series. But before I proceed with the lecture for this module, I would like to congratulate everybody for a job well done, particularly for the two homeworks that I have assigned to you. You have great a, you have done a very very great job for both for the mind map grabe very brilliant yung inyong mga ideas and how i wish we can really meet face to face because i'm sure you have so many ideas to share with your classmates so congratulations to everybody so also for the second homework which is on the reflection paper for the technopreneurs I am so happy na ang dami niyong inintroduce na technopreneurs, iba't iba, may yung iba sa inyo nag-introduce ng foreign technopreneurs, some of you have even presented local technopreneurs, and I am very happy that you have really done your work. But on the other hand, please make sure that when you are doing a reflection paper or a, or a research type of paper, Please make sure that you do not just cut, copy, and paste what you see in the internet and submit it to me. So I always uh, check the papers that you submit to me through a software called the Plagiarism Checker. And in that software, nakikita kung ilang percent yung kinat and paste nyo lang from the internet. So, yung iba sa inyo, nabigyan ko ng comment kung ilang percent yung lumabas dun sa paper nyo. So, please, next time when you will be doing your work, not only in my subject, but in all your other subjects, please always reword. Always reword the things that you find in the internet or even in the books that you're using or in the references that you are using. Okay, so I hope that will be clear to everybody. And for today, I'll be discussing now Module 2, Unit 2. And this module is uh, entitled Government Support to MSMEs in the Philippines. And what is MSMEs? We have our micro, small, and medium entrepreneurs. Okay, so we have micro, the small, and the medium entrepreneurs. We will be seeing the difference uh, of each type in a while. And again, for our learning outcomes in this unit, one, to classify our MSMEs in the Philippines. So alam natin, maraming negosyo, maraming uh, entrepreneurs tayo nakikita around us. So how do we classify them? How do we classify them? So if we see a certain business, is this considered a micro entrepreneur? Is this business considered a medium entrepreneur, etc.? Two, advance search the impact of MSMEs in context of employment. And three, understand that the government empower the MSMEs through the different government agencies, assistance programs, and policies. And we have the pre-assessment activity. So maybe before we proceed with the next slide, we can just pause a bit and tingnan natin, sagutin natin ito in our minds. So probe the presence of MSMEs in your area, list at least 10 enterprises in your community, and classify them as micro, small, medium and large. So, pinagsama na yung medium and large. Then, justify why you think it is a micro, small, medium, or large enterprise. So, at this point, kung iisipin nyo kung ano yung mga business in your place, in your vicinity, in your city, in your province, and then, try now to classify each. So, isip kayo ng siguro mga 10, sabi nga rito, isip kayo ng 10 enterprises. Ito bang naisip nyo is micro, is it small, is it medium or large? So malamang yung mga nasa syudad, tinitingnan yung SM. Maybe it's considered large. So bakit natin tinawag na large? 
Pag nasa barangay tayo, we have our sari-sari stores. Ano ba siya? Small ba siya o micro? We have our uh, fast food chains. Ano ba siya? Large ba siya? O we have our karinderias. Yung karinderia ba natin is micro or small? So I can give you a few minutes just to think of those enterprises around you and then classify each. Micro, small, medium, large. And then as you classify each enterprise, try now to justify in your mind. O ito, bakit ko siya sinabing micro? Bakit ko siya sinabing small? Ito, bakit ko sinabing large? Ano yung aking basihan? Okay? And in this unit, actually, yun yung isa nating titingnan. Paano ba natin klinaklasify whether an enterprise is considered a micro, small, medium, or large enterprise? And the table now on our screens will tell us how we classify. But of course, this classification is under our country. So classification of our MSMEs in the Philippines. So if we have the first column, if our enterprise is micro, small, medium, and large. And then we have two other columns. The second column, we now look at their asset size. Ano bang asset ang meron sa kanila? And then the third column, titingnan natin. Itong kumpanya na to, itong enterprise na to, ilang bang employees ang meron sa kanya. Okay, so for the micro-enterprise, we will find there that for the asset, it is up to 3 million pesos. So kung ang asset niya is up to 3 million pesos, 1 to 9, and the number of employees, 1 to 9, then that enterprise is considered as a micro-enterprise. So makikita natin kung ang hinulaan nyo kanina, yung sari-sari store is micro, obviously, it's a micro. Kasi siguro naman ang isang sari-sari store hindi lalampas ang kanyang asset ng 3 million, di ba? And obviously, a uh, sari-sari store will not have more than 9 employees. A karinderia is also a micro uh, enterprise. Okay? And then, if we now go to the next classification that is for the small enterprise, the asset range now is from 3 million pesos, 3 million and 1 peso. Huwag natin kalimutan yung piso. Up to 15 million pesos. And then, the number of employees will be 10 to 99 employees. And then for the medium, we have uh, 15 million and 1 peso up to 100 million. Okay? And then, uh, for, so pakikorek yung uh, entry for Doon sa second sa range, nakalagay kasi dapat is from 15 million and 1 peso to. Kulang yung nakalagay doon. Kulang. And then, we have 100 to 199 employees. for That's for the medium enterprise. While for the large enterprise, the uh, asset will now be more than 100 million. And we have 200 or more employees. So, obviously, a mall like SM is considered as a large enterprise. Definitely, if you will look at the asset of SM, it's more than 100 million and SM has more than uh, 200 employees. So it's considered as a large enterprise. So going back dun sa uh, pinagawa kanina sa inyo na think of 10 enterprises around your area, tumama ba yung pili nyo? And then, tama ba yung justification nyo kung bakit siya micro, small, medium, and large? Okay? However, there will be some situations wherein uh, kung minsan, halimbawa, yung kanyang asset is nasa 16 million. Pero, yung number of employees niya, let's say, is nasa 80. Looking at our table, kung by asset size ang usapan, that enterprise will be medium. But 
if we will now be looking at the number of employees, since 80 lang yung binanggit ko kanina, it will be classified under small. So you might be asking, o oh, saan, siya na, saan natin siya i-classify? Will, it, will we classify it under small or medium? So pag ganyan yung naging issue, kung may conflict from the table, ang susundin natin is yung sa asset size. Kasi mas madali nang tingnan yung sa number of employees. Di ba? Madali na mag-adjust doon eh. Mas importante yung sa asset size. So please take note of this table, how we uh, classify an enterprise as micro, small, medium, or large. And, sabi nga dun sa learning outcomes, titingnan natin kung paano nagsusuport ang ating gobyerno sa ating mga entrepreneurs. And, we have here five. Five Republic Acts. And the first one is Republic Act number 10644, which is called the Go, the Go Negosyo Law. Or the Go Negosyo Law, I mean. Then two, the Barangay Micro Business Enterprise Law which is labeled by Republic Act 9178, which was executed during the year 2002. And then number three, we have the Magna Carta for Small and Medium Enterprises, Republic Act 6977. And the fourth, the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, Republic Act 8293. Number five, Innovative Startup Act, which is under Republic Act. 11337. And we'll look at each of this very quickly. The first one, Republic Act 10644. Or this is the Go Negotio Act. And anong sabi rito? The state is to foster national development, promote inclusive growth, and reduce poverty by encouraging the establishment of micro, small, and medium enterprises, or yun yung MSMEs, that facilitate local job creation, production, and trade in the country. So if you will look at the first paragraph here, yan lang yung tinignan natin dun sa mga previous sections eh. Kung bakit mayroong entrepreneurship, di ba? It should generate jobs, it should help... Uh, in the production, and it should help in the trade in the country. And MSMEs increase income for poor households and build both business equity and personal assets over a period of time. The state shall develop plans and initiate means to ease the constraints on the establishment of MSMEs in order to rationalize the existing bureaucratic regulations providing greater incentives and benefits of MSMEs in strengthening the uh, MSMEED. So, dinagdag lang doon yung uh, Development Council. Okay? So, yung Republic Act 10644 basically is telling us that it is the role of the government to develop to promote entrepreneurship, whether it will be micro, it will be small, medium, or large. Next, we have Republic Act 9178, or that's the Barangay Micro Business Enterprise Law. This, this uh, Republic Act is to hasten the country's economic development by encouraging the formation and growth of Barangay Micro Business Enterprises, which effectively serve as seedbeds of Filipino entrepreneurial talents. So, strengthening BMBES or BMBEs would mean more jobs and livelihood and better quality of life for the Filipinos. In other words, ito lang Republic Act 9178 is telling us na dapat mag-umpisa sa, sa, sa maliit munang section ng ating bansa. And that's the barangay. Okay? And again, ang may role niyan is our government. So, to hasten the country's economic development by encouraging the formation and growth of barangay micro-businesses. So, iba't iba. Iba't ibang businesses. Kaya pag titingnan nyo nga, if you will uh, go and check your own barangays, marami. Diba? May mga livelihood programs, uh, kung ano-ano. 
kung ano ni kinikreate nila because they want to help the people in the locality. RA6977 this time, the Magna Carta for Small and Medium Enterprises. So yung pangalawa nating tinignan natin, parang kinuha niya yung micro. So this time, we have our Republic Act for the Small and Medium Enterprises. This is now an act to promote, develop, and assist small and medium-scale enterprises through the creation of a Small and Medium Enterprise Development, SMED, Council. So makikita natin, uh, sa barangay level, gagawa rin ng council. Pagdating dito, sa small medium, gagawa pa rin siya ng council. And the rationalization of government assistance, programs, and agencies concerned with the development of small and medium enterprises and for other purposes. So basically, ganun pa rin. Uh, it's still the government, uh, it is the role of the government to generate entrepreneurs and this time ang tinitingnan niya lang for this Republic Act will be those under small and medium enterprises and the th fourth is the intellectual property code of the Philippines I think you're familiar with this so the state recognizes that an effective intellectual and industrial property system is vital to the development of domestic and creative activity facilitates transfer of technology, attracts foreign investments, and ensures market access for our product. So, it shall protect and secure the exclusive rights of scientists, inventors, artists, and other gifted citizens to their intellectual property and creations. Okay? Uh, ownership. Ownership yung binabanggit dito. Ang isang clear na example dito is the copyright law. Diba? Copyright law. Kaya nga, ang isang application niyan is yung binanggit ko kanina sa inyo regarding your reflection papers, your researches in the future. Do not just copy and paste. Do not just cut and paste the things that you see in the internet. Kasi nga, yung mga researches na yan, merong intellectual property law na sumusuporta dyan. At pag ikaw, halimbawa, yung research work mo, kinopya mo lang from an existing research na hindi mo man lang binanggit, hindi mo man lang sinight yung author, you can be uh, sued for plagiarism. And pag titignan nyo ang batas, you can go and search for it, medyo mabigat din ang parusa sa plagiarism. And itong law na to, yun ang prinoprotektahan niya. Kasi nga, meron tayo, di ba? Nabanggit ko nga last time, pag uh, magtatayo tayo ng negosyo natin, hindi naman ibig sabihin laging bago. Pwede tayong mag-adapt, pwede tayong manggaya, pero uh, sabi natin, as much as possible, lagi natin lalagyan ng innovation. Ngayon, pag nag-introduce ka ng bago, at sigurado ka na ikaw yung unang nag-introduce doon, Yan, pwede mo siyang ipasok as uh, as something that will be protected by RA 8293. So that uh, later on, kahit nga pag may gagamit na nung idea mo, babayaran ka. Babayaran ka ng uh, royalty dahil ikaw yung pinaka-author nung idea na yon Kaya, on the other hand, kung ikaw rin yung naka-invento nun, syempre, ayaw mo rin na basta gagamitin o basta kokopyahin lang ng iba, ba? Kaya, dapat lagi natin isipin yon Very, very clear example yung sinasabi ko nga kanina on plagiarism. So, please, uh, reminder again, whenever you will be doing any work later on, in my subject or in your other subjects, make sure, make sure you quote the author, you quote the references and reword reword the things that you have seen from the internet do not just copy do not just cut and paste hindi ganun ang magtrabaho dapat inaayos nyo okay next 
we have uh, the Innovative Startup Act. That's RA 11337. Ano naman yung sinasabi rito? The state to foster inclusive growth through an inno innovative economy by streamlining government and non-government initiatives in both local and international spheres to create new jobs and opportunities, improve production and advance innovation, and trade in the country. The state shall provide incentives and remove constraints aimed at encouraging the establishment and operation of innovative new businesses. Businesses crucial to their growth and expansion and to strengthen, promote, and develop. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, na natakpan na nung screen ko yung, yung, yung portion na yun. Anyway. Uh, you will be asked later on also to to read more about this Republic Acts. And kung papansin ninyo yung lima, parang may mga similarities siya, eh, no? May similarities siya. And sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, basically, dito sa unit na to, we are looking at the government as the backbone of our enterprises in the country. Ang pinaka-support system na mga enterprises natin, whether it is micro, small, medium, or large, laging nasa gobyerno. Okay? So, dito ang ganda yung pagka-state niya. The state to foster inclusive growth through an innovative economy by streamlining government and non-government initiatives in local and international spheres to create new jobs and opportunities, improve production, and advance innovation and trade in the country. Okay? And then, uh, pag sinayasat nyo nga itong maigi, lagi nyo lang binabalikan yung definition ng entrepreneurship. Okay? So, ito pa yung ibang assistance na binibigay ng ating gobyerno. We have our financial assistance. Government through government agencies provide financial assistance through grants and loans. Yan. Kaya, uh, pag titingnan nyo ang mga government banks, ano bang government bank na nag-exist ngayon? Land bank, di ba? Pag pumunta kayo sa land bank, meron silang mga existing loans doon na nakakategorize specifically for kung anumang negosyo. Halimbawa, merong specific loans for farmers may specific loans for, let's say, yung mga nag start ng sari-sari uh, stores. Uh, yung mga project sa barangay, meron yung mga ganong loans. That is one support na naiibigay ng ating gobyerno. Two, marketing, markets, marketing assistance. Provision of assistance in the form of promotion, product clinic, and development pricing, and distribution. So, very clear naman kung paano yung pagka-state niya ron. Marketing assistance. So, sila yung tumutulong to promote. To promote yung ating mga produkto. Production and productivity assistance. Assistance through trainings and workshop on productivity enhancement. That's why you will find uh, napakaraming trainings. Kahit nga, di ba sa mga barangays, meron yung mga uh, binibigay ang ating mga barangay. Halimbawa, for Uh, ibang example pwede natin ibigay rito. Halimbawa yung mga nasa mga housewives, di ba? Tinutulungan nila kung ano-anong skills ang pwedeng matutunan. Yan. Under, under what assistance yan? Production and productivity. So, even in those little things, support yan ng gobyerno. And kahit yung mga malalaki pang bagay, ito nga pandemic na naganap sa atin ngayon. Ang dami-dami pa rin binigay ng gobyernong tulong through production and productivity assistance. How? Yung mga webinars. Kahit hindi na nagfe-face to face, dumami ang free seminars na makikita natin sa internet. Iba't iba, iba't ibang klase ng internet. Ah, uh, makikita niyo diyan, meron yung mga uh, naging online business, yung kung paano mag-handle ng online business, paano mag handle ng online classes, uh, paano gumawa ng uh, distance learning materials, yung mga yun, 
Those are some examples of assistance given by the government that will now fall under production and productivity assistance. Okay? By the way, before I proceed, I forgot to mention earlier in the introduction, uh, di ba meron akong pinadala sa inyong isang link on a webinar, uh, particularly yung company on human nature, di ba? Ang isang kilalang produkto nila is yung insect repellent. And uh, napakaganda nung isang portion na nabanggit doon, nung yung, yung foreigner na yung nagsasalita yung lalaki. And I like to share that part. I, I forgot to share it earlier kasi. Yung part na, di ba, nung sabi nila, yung citronella yung pinaka-basic component ng ginagamit nila dun sa, sa spray na yon And binibili nila from local farmers. So, nabibili nila ng around 700 pesos. But, when they realized, nung umikot sila sa mga farmers, nakita na nila yung presyo na wala na palang kinikita yung mga farmers dun sa pagbili nila, dun sa ganong amount. And, ano yung ginawa ng kumpanya? Kung pinakinggan nyo yun, di ba, ang ginawa ng kumpanya is dinagdagan nila yung bayad sa mga farmers, kahit hindi naman humihingi yung mga farmers. And, what is a very good insight that we will learn from there? Pag tayo pumasok sa isang negosyo, dapat nandun yung pagiging kristyano natin. Dapat nandun yung pagiging pagkakaroon natin ng Christian spirit. Dapat hindi tayo nanlalamang. Kasi imagine nyo yung part na yun. Nandun na. di ba? Actually, nasa advantage ng company yon because they were buying the raw product at a very minimal amount. And yet, na discover nila na kawawa naman na pala yung mga farmers, sila na mismo yung nagdagdag. So again, ano yung pinaka-importante lesson doon? Pag tayo, papasok sa negosyo in the future, yan ang lagi nating iisipin. Huwag na huwag tayong manlalamang sa iba. Okay? Tibaling lumiit yung kita as long as nakakatulong tayo. Remember, isang goal ng pagninegosyo is maka-generate ng income para sa iba, maka-generate ng trabaho para sa iba, para lumawak ang pag-circulate ng pera. Kasi pag lumawak ang pag-circulate ng pera, gumaganda rin ang ating economy. Okay? Kaya, again, in the future, we don't know kung sino sa atin ang uh, mapupunta sa negosyo. Please, please take note of that lesson na pwede natin mapulot doon. And here now is your activity for this unit. The first one, you don't need to submit this. And uh, so, yung anong una? Uh, read newspapers or magazines to uh, be able to search for government programs for the development of MSMEs. So, hanap kayo. Hanap kayo sa internet. And then... Yung mga Republic Acts na na-discuss natin kanina, if you want to get the detailed uh, discussions of those, nasa internet din yan, please try to search those uh, Republic Acts. And then, visit the webpage of DTI and search for MSME statistics to get a view on the role of MSMEs in employment creation and value creation. Okay, and for the elaborate activity, so ito, ito na yung kailangan yung uh, isubmit. Elaborate activity, create an infographic of government supports to growth of entrepreneurship. Okay, so kanina na nabanggit na natin yung ilan. You can still go and search for some other assistance that the government can offer for the growth of entrepreneurship. And then, you now create an infographic. So, for this one, uh, ipopost ko na lang uli sa Google Classroom kung anong section kayo mag, uh, sa submit. So, for this, para hindi na siguro mahirapan yung uh, mahina sa paggamit ng softwares, 
if you want, you can just draw, you can just picture your drawing, and then submit nyo na lang yung drawing nyo yan sa akin. And then, uh, another assignment that will be given to you in this section is, in five sentences, rationalize why government needs support to support the growth of entrepreneurship. So, five sentences lang ha. Please follow the instruction. Five sentences. So, in five sentences, rationalize why government need to support the growth of entrepreneurship. Okay? So, I will just be posting this in our Google Classroom. Yung dalawa. Paghihiwalayin ko na lang ulit. Okay? So, that will be the end for Unit 2 uh, of Module 2. So, for this week, dalawang video yung makikita nyo. So, ito plus I'll also be discussing Unit 1 of Module 3 already. Okay? So, please uh, visit again your Google Classrooms and uh, uh, check out the things that I'll be posting. Okay, see you in the next module.